everything's okay. Uh, hello, everybody again. Um, good morning. Uh, well, many thanks for uh, for attending this webinar. My name is Juan Garcia. I am the product manager of the Greenhouse Cava Division in Armando Alvarez Group. And today we are going to talk about the common applications of cover plastics and the business growth expectations. There will be a, a question and answer session that will take place at the end of the webinar. Uh, remember that you will have to do it through the question and answers icon, which is below the video, at least in my screen. And you can do it from now. You don't need to wait until the end. Well, we will talk about uh, the evolution of polyethylene covers, the uh, current situation on main challenges, plastic greenhouse solutions, um, succeed uh, case studies, and finally, as I said before, uh, questions and answers session. Uh, greenhouse film uh, was uh, first used in the 1948 as a cheaper version of a glass house. A horticultural professor in the College of Agriculture in Kentucky, uh, Dr. Emmert and his team, focused on improvements in production using the new plastics uh, that were developed during the war. Um, one of the results of Emmert's research was the creation of the field greenhouse. It was a simple structure that's, that was built from the lightweight boot and clear plastic seating. Uh, today, it may not sound technologically advanced, but in the 1950s, it was a revolutionary concept um, that changed the agriculture worldwide. Emmer's field greenhouse uh, didn't catch on at first in the United States, however, Europeans and lately Asians uh, quickly latch on to this technology. I guess the main reason for, for this is that in the USA, the US was all connected and an interstate highway system was being built. So in the US, if they needed winter produce, a simple truck came from Florida to Kentucky and, and that's all. Uh, but in Europe in the 1950s, you couldn't do that. And the same for Asia. There was no transportation, and even if there was transportation, it wasn't from a subtropical winter climate. Here in Spain, the first greenhouses were installed in the 1970s. The plastic cover helped avoid the risk of plants and crops being damaged from, uh, by the wind, by the rain, and in northern areas, hail or snow. More importantly, a greenhouse enabled the growing of plants at times and in places where they would never have grown without the microclimate created inside the greenhouse. But at the beginning, uh, the kind of materials used uh, here, for example, in Almeria, uh, used for more than 15 years, were very simple uh, and very standard, but effective and really profitable. Uh, same thickness, same color, um, only for the goal of preventing crops for disadvantaged weather conditions. Um, in a second stage with thermal properties that could retain a few degrees more at night, nobody asked about the optical or mechanical properties. Right now we are always talking about this, but there was no reason for doing that because you could produce during the winter period and it was really profitable, uh, same plastic for everything. Increasingly, the term of uh, plastic culture has been used in relation to cultivated land protected by plastic greenhouses and, and other plastic structures. Are lighter, as I said before, cheaper, um, um, more easily assembled at glass houses. Uh, films can be customized to the grower needs, um, while plastic greenhouse film have gone through an impressive technological development, the glass technology offers only a small improvements. Um,
well, um, current situation and main challenges. Uh, why do we think uh, that intensive or protective horticulture will play a definitive role in the next years, for example, in the next 30 years? There are some reasons for this. Um, global population growth, the world population has been constantly increasing and, and according to the UN, there are likely to be around 8.5 billion people on Earth within little more than a decade and almost 10 billion people by 2050. Uh, FAO estimates that agriculture will have to produce 50% more by 2050 in order to meet the uh, demand for food. In the slide, uh, as we can see in the slide, the, the total number of people living on Earth has tripled since the 1950s and continues to increase. The first significant rise in population uh, happened uh, during the 14th century, uh, and after the, the Black Death that killed approximately 25 million people worldwide. Uh, subsequently, the global population increased slowly but steadily until it reached record numbers between the 1950s and, and 2000. And scientists uh, worry that natural resources such as oil and food will become scarce, uh, endangering the human race and even more the, the world cycle system. Nowadays, the number of starving people worldwide has decreased slightly, but uh, uh, forecast uh, paint a darker picture. Uh, raising uh, GDP per capita and, and, and growing organization is changing consumption patterns. Um, also, according to FAO, FAO stat, all regions of the world are forecast to experience rising incomes, and the rate of urbanization is growing in many regions of the world. This will lead uh, to an increase in the consumption of higher value and processed foods. Um, growing demand for, for animal-based proteins such as uh, milk, uh, eggs, mm. in more mature consumer markets, increasingly in form and um, health and environmentally conscious, consumers will demand high quality food produced with a limited amount or no pesticides and in line with, uh, with the animal welfare standards. As commented before, all regions are forecast to experience rising incomes, and in the coming years, we will see how those countries with the largest populations will become those with the highest purchasing power. Uh, China, as an example, already is today, but uh, it will triple its purchasing power, and India uh, will almost quadruple it, and emerging countries such as Turkey, Brazil, or Egypt uh, will unseat economies that to this day still leave uh, these type of statistics, uh, for example, Germany or, or Japan. More reasons for thinking that intensive protective horticulture will play a definite role in, in, in the next years. Uh, increasing use of new technologies in the agri-food sector. Um, these developments include uh, the use of advanced monitoring systems to increase efficiency uh, and anticipate uh, reduced risks such as adverse weather, also climate change. Uh, worldwide, agricultural yields uh, are increasingly under threat from principally from increased temperatures, droughts, floods, and other extreme weather events with countries in low latitude areas affected the worst. As a result, uh, food insecurity will increase, emphasizing the need to apply advanced technological solutions to ensure food security where possible, and to develop strategies to avoid food losses and food waste. Competition for natural resources, uh, food, feed, and energy makes... Uh, uh, these markets are, are becoming more interdependent as biomass is being increasingly used in non-food applications, 
such as biofuels, with potentially negative impacts on food security. Um, also, consolidation in the agricultural and horticultural sectors in, in many areas of the world, uh, farms, um, horticultural operations are becoming bigger and, and increasingly intensified. This, this involves uh, the increased application of, of modern technologies for increasing crop yields. It's, it's very important also. Plastic uh, greenhouse solutions. So as, as previously mentioned, uh, the, plastic, the, the plastics that cover the first greenhouses had the main function of protecting crops uh, from bad weather and, and the same type of plastics were used for, for crops. Uh, today, advances in technology allow us uh, to adapt the properties of the films to the specific needs of each agricultural producer. Now I will comment on an overview of uh, the different types of plastic materials, depending on the type of crop they are protecting, as well as some other applications outside the agri-food sector. And remember that you can ask your questions through the questions and answers icon, and you can do it from now. You don't, you don't need to wait until, until the end. I will answer by the end at the end. Well, berry cultivation is one of the most widespread in the world uh, and also in the United States. Uh, the increase in berries cultivation area in recent years has been very intense, especially that of protective cultivation. The more intense its color, the greater nutritional value they will have. In addition, in addition to, to, to the usual benefits of crop protection with the plastic film, protection against rain, wind, hail, pest, and disease reduction, it takes on special importance the, the film optical properties that will affect to the color of the fruit, degrees breaks, uh, pollination, temperature, The plastic for this uh, family of uh, crops, the berries, must also be designed to adapt itself to the most common structures of these crops, the, the macro tunnels or Spanish tunnels. Uh, macro tunnels are lightweight, modular, um, fast assembled. The adaptation to the structure and the handling of the film will determine its mechanical properties, starting with its installation, its attachment to it, and opening and closing operations for ventilation, arc angles, sometimes even the structure's change of place, and the plastic must be prepared for that. Flowers. One of the most effective sectors by the COVID-19 uh, is the floricultural sectors. Uh, this crisis uh, spreads throughout the world, uh, but uh, is especially hard in those flower exporting countries, uh, with the cancellation, for example, in Colombia of 80% of the orders, and also in countries with a tradition of flowers commerce. The, the plastic materials designed for flower coverage are among the, the most technological ones. It requires a special advanced technology, especially regarding to its optical properties. In these materials, we modify the passage of, of light into the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Depending on the blockage or allowance of the passage of certain wavelengths, we will positively affect the flower, the plant, in each of its varieties. Red rose, bicolor rose, carnation, ornamental plants, uh, etc., are the most popular crops of this family. And each of these varieties requires uh, a specific cover materials. Well, mm. In addition, 
um, other qualities of the material, such as thermicity or pesticide resistance, also takes uh, special relevance. The correct choice of cover material is one of the decisions that will have a very important influence on the success of the harvest. Uh, parameters such as stand length, uh, color intensity, bad diameter, uh, absence of uh, petal blackening, um, graphics slides uh, are real examples of the influence of plastic cover on these concrete parameters. In them, uh, you can see how the use of a more suitable material um, influences the length of the stem. Mm -hmm. This will be five, five uh, centimeters, is something like uh, twelve point seven inches, and one more leaf throughout the crop. Fruits. Covering fruits uh, with plastic sitting is, is a booming reality. Mm. The simplest greenhouses that we find in fruit growing are those which are covered by nets. Their main fa function uh, is uh, to protect the fruit from the wind, from the hail, but uh, there are more and more crops in which the investment in structure and plastic film is justified. And since plastic can influence more parameters to achieve greater and, bread and better productions, uh, more uniform in size and color, and forward in obtaining breeze degrees, advance or postpone harvest, the most currently covered fruits are table grapes, uh, cherries, bananas, um, and kiwis. Taking, taking out uh, the red fruits from this section that we talked before in the berries. But uh, there are many trials with other fruits, other varieties, such as papaya or, or mango. The plastic fruit covers are special for their optical properties, which uh, will depend on the type of fruit and within the type of fruit, the variety is... Uh, can be good for the same kind of fruit. It can be really, really good for a kind of variety, and it has not the same effect in other varieties. But uh, generally, generally speaking, improves always improves, and also special for its mechanical properties, uh, which must adapt and very important to the structure and handling of the crop. Mm, as we can see the pictures, uh, the materials abound with lateral and central reinforcements, uh, optimal for interacting with all these accessories that uh, serve as a union between the plastic seed and the structure. Vegetables uh, is the most widespread greenhouse cover application in the world, um, mainly for, I'm, 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 I'm watching Marina is, is asking a question I will, I will answer you at, at the end of the of the webinar. Many thanks. Um, as I as I told you, vegetable uh, vegetables uh, vegetable film is, is is the most widespread application in the world, mainly for tomato, paper, and cucumber, but also for all kinds of vegetables, lettuce, aubergine, zucchini, you see. Here, as in most applications, plastic is one of the tools that will help us control the main parameters that affect the crop, uh, mainly light and temperature. The choice of the properties of the covering material uh, will depend on the crop, uh, the geographical area, and also the time or the period of the year. In recent years, a series of additives have also been developed to help improve the action of plastic on crops. Extra thermal, anti-thermal, that reduce temperatures in the hottest hours, anti-condensation, anti-mist, extra pesticide resistance. The use for 
some transforming companies of five and seven layers uh, makes possible some five and seven layers technology makes possible to optimize the use of all these series of additives as well as their viability for their commercialization i'm talking about the ratio between the price of these materials and the benefit you are getting from from the geo the choice of uh, of, of the material is especially important in high-tech greenhouses also in medium technology and in low technology for sure because uh, its category uh, has its, its own specifications, but really, really important in high-tech greenhouses, uh, where there is usually a double coverage, forming a double chamber. To obtain the desired values of light and temperature, we must perfectly combine these two seats. For example, uh, outer seat extra resistant to pesticides. If we want to heat the air chamber between the two seats uh, with air from inside the greenhouse, if we are using more pesticides than expected in, in inside the greenhouse, and we are taking this air for rowing the, the chamber, then we are putting all these pesticides in a 20 centimeter space. That's why it's very important to choose the right out layer uh, film, uh, in this case, being resistant to pesticides. Important steps are also being taken uh, in its management after use. First, there has been a reduction in thickness um, and an increase in life expectancy due to the evolution of the aforementioned technologies. 20 years ago, in Spain, for example, we needed uh, 200 microns for one year and a half uh, and right now we are using 180 but in many many countries of the world we are using 150 microns for three years or four years or or less thickness this is an advance uh, and in each country uh, systems are being organized for post collection and reuse i will talk a little bit later about this well, uh, cannabis film. The market for medical cannabis is, is currently estimated in $11 trillion and is considered to be triple for, for the year 2025, within four years. This growth is due to the legality of the crop um, and the extraction of different compounds, the THC and CBD, and their commercialization since they are used in the pharmaceutical, uh, cosmetic, uh, food, uh, and textile industries. Um, there are the main varieties uh, farmers are growing are sativa indica and rudalis, but also hybrids. Um, uh, what are we expecting from uh, a plastic? that uh, that is covering this plant we are still discovering the most appropriate materials in every situation geographically kind of variety but generally speaking we could say that uh, what we are looking for is to improve the production of trichomes and obtain the highest amount of thc and cbd um, this is better achieved uh, through the use of uh, UV open materials with uh, the UV light spectrum open from 280 nanometers to 320 nanometers. Mm. The more UV uh, radiation the plant receives, the more resin it produces. Mm. Also, uh, opaque uh, materials are widely used, black and white, uh, green and white, uh, with the aim of reducing daylight hours when necessary or for stretches in which the plant is dried in the absence of outside light. Whether for the legalization of cannabis in, in nine of uh, states of the United States or, or due to the uh, therapeutic effects that uh, have been studied for years in patients with different diseases, 
what is certain is uh, that we are likely to see formulations of beers, wines, chocolates with cannabidiol as, as an ingredient. Right? Anyway, uh, I said before that we are still learning with this, with this uh, crop, uh, but we expect uh, a significant increase in the sale of plastic cover and materials for this application in the, in the coming years. The applications discussed so far are the most important and common in the role of plastic covers in berries, vegetables, flowers, fruits. And now uh, we will discuss uh, some other smaller, but no minor, agricultural and no agricultural applications. Mm. Um, for example, um, coffee and cocoa dry. Mm. Uh, in regards to our Dominican Republic and Colombian friends who are attending the webinar, for sure they, they know a lot about this application. Mm -hmm. Solar dryers uh, are small greenhouses to dry coffee or, or cocoa. Mm -hmm. It's not a new application. Producers have been doing this for years. Why do we save energy with these structures and with this system? because drying hours uh, are reduced. Uh, in coffee, for example, humidity has to drop around 12%. This is uh, commercialization humidity. And cocoa uh, has to drop to something like 16%. Uh, and for example, in countries such as Colombia, effective daylight hours are reduced to six. The other six are cloudy. Uh, then they need to take advantage of these solar hours as much as possible. Also decreases the emission of gases because they will use less dryer machines which use diesel engines to run and emit gases. Sure. Uh, reduces drying time. Seven, from seven uh, to 10 days, as we can see in the slide, uh, under a solar dryer, while if it is outside, it can be up to almost two weeks or more, um, depending on what the grain will wet or not. And it also loses quality because these grains are organoleptic and absorb all the others that are around them. Then we get more quality with a uh, solar dryer. Aquaculture films. It's also a common practice in South America. Uh, many stream producers in Latin America are using pre-hatcheries as part of their global production strategy, particularly large one. Pre-hatchery systems are relatively less common in Asia, but uh, are expanding rapidly and gaining popularity. An important benefit is uh, increase operational uh, control and um, biosecurity. By reducing the crop area um, and volume in a series of intensively managed high density tanks, uh, we have a better control over the water quality. Another advantage of pre-hatchery system is better health from disease because larger and older shrimp will have a more developed immune system. Uh, and it is, I guess, uh, as a management strategy for avoiding reducing the white spot virus. I think this is the main advantage. Uh, when the water temperature is outdoor, um, temperature is lower, and the animal's susceptibility to this disease increases. Instead, the shrimping greenhouse hatcheries can be kept at the water temperatures uh, above 30 degrees which will be uh, more or less a <laughs> All these benefits uh, can be applied uh, to the breeding of other fish and crustaceans. Uh, water quality, food efficiency, disease reduction. Mm -hmm. And algae, um, the main idea of these projects is the cultivation of microalgal biomass in photobioreactors. These algae constitute the good option for intensive production of base raw material 
for the subsequent production of component, uh, components for uh, cosmetic uh, food use or, or raw material for biodiesel production. I need to say that these projects are developed on an experimental basis and at the moment uh, an economic uh, viability for the industrial production is not guaranteed. Farm cover, um, also a very booming application. In recent years, uh, there's been a boom in, in the construction of, of these types of buildings with, uh, with, uh, with flexible plastic covers uh, for its simplicity and speed in construction, uh, also because their durability and, and economy. Uh, as all as in all other applications, uh, the idea of film for this one has its special characteristics. Uh, it's also a field with a high technological development. Mechanical properties are very important. Uh, concepts such as uh, tear resistance or linear expansion coefficient are fundamental. Uh, many times, temperature oscillation between winter and summer uh, could be a 50 50 degrees Celsius, or, or is, uh, I think, uh, 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the material must stretch and contract as little as possible so that it can continue to be well attached to the structure. It cannot be loose or, or lazy. Uh, at other times, the seats must be welded to cover the entire surface uh, of the sailing because imagine that this, uh, the sailing is uh, 60 meter and then you, you need to weld to eight meters with uh, seats. And also the material must be prepared for, for easy welding and its duration in time. On the other hand, there are the aesthetic characteristics. Um, there are multiple color combinations depending on the needs. On each case, uh, every color has its own meaning, green and white, silver and white, white and white. Uh, it's color with a different additive. Uh, for example, white, green, which is, a, you can say, a standard combination of colors. Uh, green on the outside to reduce the environmental impact in the other countries with grass landscape, uh, white, on the inside for reflecting more artificial light. Also in some cases, uh, flame retardant additives are also added because uh, the terminals of electrical installations are close to the film or, or because legislation prescription. Biomining, mm, bacterial leaching is a biotechnological process that uses a specific bacteria to leach or extract metals such as uranium, zinc, um, principally copper. Mm. It's increasingly being used in countries such as uh, Chile, Peru, Australia, also in the States. Mm. This technology is also applicable to, uh, to the recovery of soils contaminated with heavy metals. One of the fundamental parameters in the process is temperature, uh, since the bacteria used for accelerating the process is thermophilic. Uh, is uh, thermophilic. Uh, here is the importance of the of the plastic thermal cover. Desalination, the desalination of water. Desalination is a technique that involves removing salt from sea water to convert it into a resource that can be used for for human use, for irrigation, or industrial uses. Uh, a passive solar desalination plant consists uh, of uh, covering a water basin with a structure similar to a greenhouse in a Gothic, normally arc shape, on which the anti-drip films are placed. Uh, solar radiation favors water evaporation while the salt is being concentrated in the raft. Coming back to agricultural applications, which are the important and common applications of plastic covers, 
I'm going to talk about uh, two successful cases with uh, covers when covering a crop uh, in the world, uh, cherries in Chile and table grapes in Peru. Mm, uh, according to the information provided at the end of last year, October, I think, 2018, by the Chilean Cherry Committee, in the 2019-2020 season, historical export figures uh, were to be produced. And the forecast has been fulfilled despite the, the negative effects of, of the COVID-19. In recent years, approximately 90% of, of those experts had Asia as a destination, and almost all of them went to China. The key to success uh, in the opportunity uh, to success, um, the key point is uh, to put cherries in China at that particular time of the year, is the Chinese New Year, with quality. To achieve quality and production, uh, plastic cover plays a determining role. The numbers are, as we can see in the slide, uh, now I'm going to talk about, about acres, um, $12,500 may cost one acre to cover with a simple structure, but appropriate. Um, with a harvest of 22,000 pounds acre and an average price of, of uh, $1.15 uh, per pound, um, which is uh, $2.5 kilo, it will lose 40% of the harvest due to rain, $10,000. The investment in a structure is also amortized in one year, just only one year to amortize an investment in a structure and plastic. Mm, I must say that in Chile, uh, average prices are more expensive than this. I've talked about 1.15, and normally in Chile is something like 1.80 to 2.75 uh, dollars per pan. Okay, it would be from four to six euros per kilo. Uh, these are average prices that have been obtained in recent years. But I wanted to reduce the average price uh, to demonstrate that benefit of covering other markets where uh, the average sale price is lower. This kind of situation of losing a big percentage of the harvest occurs on many occasions. It's not an exceptional case. Peruvian grapes. Mm, another case of uh, success to highlight is the coverage of table grapes. It's been practiced for some years in some of the most representative producing countries, but it's uh, relatively new for the countries. Uh, it is true that uh, the greater or lesser success of this practice depends on several factors. For example, the grape variety. But generally speaking, as I said before, uh, covering always favors. The Peruvian market is one of the most important, if not the most, uh, for the export of table grapes in Latin America. Uh, this data was, uh, is with the Korean song variety, was carried out on a farm of 18 hectares covering half, covering nine. We already see from the beginning that the harvest increased by 45% per hectare. And we are talking uh, 13,000 kilos per hectare to 18,000, 45%. The percentage of exportable fruit is maintained, but as there is more fruit in general, logically, there is also more exportable fruit, um, much more Excel caliber. At an average sale price, real price, of $2.43 per kilo, if we multiply 
by the more quantity of exportable kilos we've got for having covered those nine hectares, it is 100,000, uh, more or less $100,000 in the return of investment. Let's say about $10,000 per hectare. Taking into consideration that uh, a structure to cover the grape can be around 30,000 euros dollars, depending on the structure, we will, we will say $30,000. We will need, in this case, in a year without exceptional weather incidents, three years to amortize the investment. And then the structure will last uh, for many more years. 18, 20, 22, many, many more years. Well, mm, I wanted to finish this, this webinar in the same way that plastic coverage should end in agricultural applications. And most uh, countries with a tradition in, in plastic culture decrease or normatives for the relation of agricultural plastics uh, uh, waste uh, are, in progress, are in progress or are being drafted. In the case of greenhouse cover among agricultural residues, uh, it is one with the greatest ease of recovery since its thickness and ease of cleaning allows it to be a material that is easily recycled. Greenhouse plastic is profitable for recycles. They still pay for it in, in most countries uh, because, what I said before, because its thickness, transparency, cleanliness, easy of cleaning, these things make it possible. Although it has a disadvantage also, uh, the degradation to which it's been subjected throughout his life, uh, solar radiation, pesticides, uh, limits, for subsequent applications. It's usually, normally is used for construction films and also for doing injection pieces, sticks for agriculture. Uh, the slide shows a series of organizations established in, in the main European countries that organize and contribute to financing greenhouse plastic cover waste. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's it. Many things, uh, many things uh, has been said. Many thanks for being here until the end. The question and answer session starts. Uh, remember that you have to do it through the question and answers button, which uh, is below the video, at least in my screen. Uh, also, I'd like to say that depending on the application that have aroused greater interest in the coming months, we will teach specific webinars for those applications, uh, preferably on the protection of plants and trees that are the most important ones in this business. Um, also, the, the webinar will be available on the YouTube channel Agri Plastics Community. And we will also send you by mail the details to connect to the channel when when the video is uh, already uploaded on YouTube. Okay, and then I'm going to the well. Uh, first question is, hello Juan, how often do you have to change plastics in greenhouses? I don't know if you are able to read the uh, the questions. Then I will read it just for you to know what I'm, I'm answering. Uh, how often do you change? Do you have to change plastics in greenhouses? Okay, it will depend on the geographical area, as I said before, uh, on the crop, uh, on the structure. There are many factors that are affecting the life expectancy of, of the plastic greenhouse covers. Uh, if I have to say um, the time, we could say that two, three, four years uh, would be the the usual time, the life expectancy of a greenhouse cover. Well, um, what would be the benefit of using a more pesticide resistance plastic? Well, uh, 
although there are some crops that uh, uh, are not, we could say that uh, the, uses of, the uses of pesticides in this crop uh, are not more than expected, are, are light, we could say. Sometimes, uh, depending on the adverse weather condition, uh, you need to use or you need to apply more, more pesticides. That's why it's important uh, to have at least a greenhouse cover material resistant to pesticides. And in uh, concrete areas, um, normally in the hottest areas, where the sulfur uh, applicances are more effective, then farmers uh, tend to use more, uh, more pesticides than expected. Um, in these cases, uh, plastic cover material with extra, with additives, extra resistant to pesticides, uh, will be the more indicated for, for this purpose. Uh, Dimple Changulani. Hi, how much is the percentage diffusion rate of light in fields for flowers and berries? How does it change with respect to climatic conditions? Well, uh, normally, uh, as the solar radiation is higher, the diffusion must be also higher. Okay? in places like the Mediterranean area or in places such as India, for example, uh, recommendations must be medium or higher diffusions. We are talking about 55 or 75 or even 99 diffusion, okay? But it will also depend on the crop. And as I said during the webinar, also will depend on the seasonal use, the period uh, or the time of the year we are using. We could stay in the south of Italy, for example, with in Sicilia, for example, with a solar radiation of more than 160 kilo Langley's. But if we are uh, growing during the winter and in a short period, perhaps we will need the less diffusion. That's why it's very important to analyze every concrete situation. But uh, generally speaking, the higher solar radiation, the higher diffusion. And it's also the same for flowers and berries. But inside flowers and inside berries, we must differentiate the different varieties. For example, and generally speaking, generally speaking, uh, blueberries, um, raspberries, need more diffusion than strawberries, okay? Generally speaking, because uh, our friends in Mexico who are attending this, this webinar will say, but we are using here 30% shadow diffusion material, 30% uh, shadow and almost 90% diffusion for strawberries. Yes, because you are growing in, in, in the very hottest areas in the center of the country. That's why it's very important to study and analyze every concrete situation. Okay, in tropical regions, after rainfall, there is a lot of algae which gets deposited in outer field area, thereby hindering the light transmission. Is there an anti-algae solution available? Well, right now, uh, for example, uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's been developed uh, a trial, an important trial with flowers in Colombia with these additives. We could say that uh, uh, polyethylene is not the best place for them to stay. It's, it's, a, it's an easy uh, media that they don't want to be in. But we know that uh, in, in very humidity without solar radiation, shadow, shadowy uh, areas, after four, five, six months, um, algae starts to, to be uh, deposited, as you said here, uh, in the pool. Um, answer your question, 
uh, yes, there are uh, additives that avoid or postpone the installation of algae uh, over the polar land. Using color films, can you promote a better color in the crop? Uh, okay, it's, it's also a, a good question. A good question. Uh, we think so. We think so, but um, it's not a still a hundred percent demonstrated. We've been doing trials for many many years. Um, mm, a different color for sure that affect uh, uh, to, to, uh, into the crop. No, it's it's something that is uh, scientifically accepted. But um, perhaps the effect will be more in a small tunnels, very, very small tunnels. I'm talking about mini tunnels or less than one meter high tunnels, all double chambers, because uh, the distance between uh, greenhouse eight or six meter at the top and the soil is too much. And then answering uh, your question, yes, uh, a different color can promote certain aspects or certain periods of the plant, uh, but with limits. Can you recommend me to use a specific plastic to produce tomatoes in the South USA? Okay, uh, I understand that South USA will be Florida, for example, North California would be considered the West. Uh, I think. If, sorry, I didn't. I don't know if uh, if I was being listened. Uh, I was saying that um, I I will consider the South of the States, for example, Florida. Uh, geographically. We will need a material with certain diffusion, I think at least 55% for sure that we need to study the concrete case for sure when they are planting, where they are growing, where they are harvesting. But generally speaking, I less than 55% in, in Florida uh, would, would not be recommendable. Uh, also, uh, a material with really, really good mechanical properties. Uh, I'm not saying that it's going to resist a hurricane, but uh, as uh, weather conditions, uh, winds, uh, storms are usual in, in Florida, the material must be prepared at least for resist the, the slighter ones. Okay. Jeff Druzda Druzda, mm, for cannabis for cannabis crops, mm, how are opaque films used in terms of mulch films? Okay, uh, we are not talking about greenhouse cover. We are talking about uh, mulch, but generally speaking, we could say, but uh, is 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 uh, for the same purpose of. Uh, what we are using the mulch for other crops, as for saving water, for, for avoiding uh, the bad grass, uh, for having a better soil structure for all these purposes. How much is the thickness of these coffee dryer films. What all additives are used? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I gave the wrong button. Is the film used for drying purpose has similar properties like greenhouse film? If yes, what would be the service life? Mm, yes, uh, we could say that finally the, 
the purpose of uh, these dry and uh, small stretches for, for coffee um, and cocoa, uh, the main purpose is to, put, to protect the coffee and cocoa from the, the climate uh, adverse situations from rain and uh, at the same time, if it's possible, giving an extra uh, thermal properties uh, would also be better. Then what we are doing is, 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 is more or less what we are doing with another uh, vegetable sort berries, protecting the, the crop from adverse weather condition, but at the time, at, at, the, right, at the same time, uh, in this case, uh, reducing the time for drying. And also, as, a, as I said uh, during the webinar, and also for preventing uh, the coffee and cocoa for exterior odors that finally are less in the quality of the product. Do you have greenhouse solution for anti-algae? Well, as I said before, uh, it can be a solution or it, it can reduce uh, the postpone the, the time when the algae appears. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we are doing trials with uh, next generation additives for anti-algae in Colombia, uh, which is a place that after four or five months, the covers are plenty of algae. And uh, we didn't still have the, the results because the, the COVID, but uh, I think within one, two months, we will be able to give you as much uh, data as you require. You mentioned five year life expectancy for some greenhouse applications. How do you deal with dust on algae over time? Is it effective to have such a long life expectancy? Oh, sorry. Sorry, the next one. What's most appreciated in this industry? The development of more performant plastics or the improvement of the functionality of the plastics. What's the most appreciated in this industry? The development of more performance plastic or improvement of the functionality of the plastics? Well, I think it's a combination of both. Uh, to be honest, I don't 100% understand this question, uh, but you can email me and I will, I will give you a more detailed answer. But uh, I think both of, of the uh, questions that you are putting on the table are very, very important. Is it convenient to use TIF inside greenhouses? Okay, a TIF is a totally impermeable film. It's a mulch that is used for uh, disinfection. And the answer is yes. Is it's not convenient. This is really, really convenient and very important because the things, because you will do a better disinfection, and because you will protect the greenhouse cover uh, from the gases that can escape to the air, and finally you are giving an extra life to your greenhouse cover. Well, a question from my friend Victor from Colombia. What's the life expectancy of the white film used to cover the warehouses, uh, depending on the geographical area? For example, we are selling in Korea or Japan uh, five years materials, four or five years materials uh, in 180 microns. But uh, if you are asking, about Colombia, for example, um, I think uh, with thicker materials, with uh, 250 microns, we could get also four or five years. 
but uh, I think uh, that the kind of uh, clients uh, who are looking for this kind of materials are expecting five years uh, because they don't want to change the cover every two or three years. Well, what's the upside, downside, downside for plastic versus glass in polycarbonate? Um, I'm sorry, but I don't understand the, the question. You can email uh, me later and uh, I will try to give you uh, an explanation about this. Please confirm if we can produce film with multi-application. For example, travel from in the soil crystal group, which will be working well for very vegetables, lettuce, green onion, Korean dill, and so on, which our customers sell from a stock. Mm, yes, it won't be the, the better or the best a specific material for each purpose, but we are conscious that uh, every distributor cannot have a, a kind of different material in, in his facilities for selling the exact right material for every farmer, every application. Then we need to look for something that can fit uh, the more, the more applications as, as possible. Um, then, the answer uh, for your question is yes. How many days? Uh, how many days in average could I harvest my cherries if covered? Will depend on the geographical area and will depend on the variety, but uh, the same farm, the same variety, the same geographical area. Uh, we've checked one week before. Can we expect the same efficiency using plastic in grapes in Europe than the one got in South America, economical and agronomical results? Yes, yes. Uh, many years ago, perhaps, I, uh, I haven't known this. Uh, I'm just traveling all over the world uh, since 10 years. And I can tell you that uh, the technological uh, grade in South America is, is the same as in Europe. You know? At least uh, the farmers and the growers are really, really technical and are using very sophisticated materials. Another thing is the factories. Uh, factories, I, I still think that in, in Europe, uh, there is a, a more advanced technology in production. Can you suggest an additive companies for anti algae Yes, for sure. So plus, so trafa, gradient bus. I will send you later uh, the the names or the contact names for you to for you to get uh, all the information that you need for sure. How is used to apply those algae additives? Well, I'm, I'm saying that the algae additives is uh, is the tending topic, hmm? the tending topic. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's good. I've heard that it's very specific to the particular algae and uh, thus makes it very difficult and expensive to develop those solutions. What are your thoughts around this? Well, there are there are some uh, chemical products that uh, also helps to avoid or to postpone the installation of algae in the covers. And also, uh, as I commented before, there are 
some additives for this purpose. Then it's a question to it's a question to try. Uh, what is sure that perhaps you won't avoid if you wanna if you wanna have your material for three, four, or five years. Uh, it's gonna be very difficult, if not impossible, to avoid the installation of algae. But uh, the goal is to postpone uh, their installation as much time as possible. And I think right now we are in disposal to get uh, to get this. Can you can you recommend to use uh, a specific plastic to produce flowers in Ukraine? Uh, okay, first of all, regards to my friends uh, in Misol. Mm -hmm. uh, as I commented before, for sure that I can recommend uh, an, a specific material for flowers in Ukraine, but uh, I'd like to know a little bit more uh, the kind of flowers, the concrete region, is possible the kind of structures, and with all this data, for sure that we can design the, the best material for this purpose. What does the number of layers in greenhouse uh, film influence on? Well, uh, I think it's the last question and is a really good question because it's very important. It's very important because um, many years ago, uh, manufacturers only uh, had three layers technology. Today, uh, uh, we can produce in three, five, and seven layers technology. And it's really, really important because, uh, generally speaking, you can put um, five or six different materials in every layer. Then we are getting final materials with more than 40 different things. And it's like science fiction. It's really technology. It's really technology. And sometimes, for example, as an example, the barrier films. Uh, barrier additives are very expensive. If we had only three layers technology, then we had to put these expensive additives in the 33% of the total material because it's three layers. And it would be very, very expensive. And the final result in the crop uh, would be better, but perhaps the farmer uh, couldn't buy the material because of the price. With the cellular layer tunnelers, you can put this additive in just only one layer of the seven, and then uh, the, the, the final price or in, for using only this additive in one seven of the total material quantity, the final price is uh, acceptable for farmers. The uses of these uh, technologies uh, are really, really important. And right now, it's really difficult to understand uh, companies with free lawyers technology. Well, um, as I told you before, um, the webinar will, will be available um, on the YouTube channel, our Plastics Communities. Um, we will also send you by email all the details to connect to this channel. And in this email, uh, we, will also, we will also send my emails for someone uh, to specify something about the questions uh, and the answers uh, we'll be talking about today. Mm -hmm. Once more time, I, I'd like to, to thank you for being here and, and I hope you, you have learned something new. Um, as I told you before, in the near future, we will uh, specify more in every application, principally the agricultural applications, and we will talk more in detail uh, about about the most mm, interested applications. Mm -hmm. You will decide uh, which will be the most interested.
Okay. Uh, many thanks. <laughs>